Upheaval. Breaking Point. Chapter 36. Chasing Scarlet. Hammer Chain Smithy was alive with activity, even though dawn had barely started. Having spent yesterday negotiating with the other logistics officers, Hammer Chain returned to his work with a vengeance. In his enthusiasm, he dragged along a still sleepy rarity and spike. With leather and cloth repairs not yet coming in, he had seized the opportunity to teach Rarity on how to forge her first knife. Thus, the clanging that came from his smithy did not come from his practice strikes, but from Rarity's first awkward attempt at metalworking. Put some more spirit into those hammer strikes, Rarity, Hammerchain said. That's not how I showed you, unless you're trying to make a comment on my forging. I'm sorry, Hammerchain, Rarity answered with a barely suppressed yawn. Though the lack of sleep left her sluggish and partially inattentive, she was surprised by the ease by which she maneuvered the heavy hammer. True to what Prince Toronto had said, all she needed was to stay in the barrier lands to eventually attune herself to its magic. She wasn't growing by leaps and bounds like Twilight was doing, but her telekinesis had all but returned to its normal strength. Now if only her sleep hadn't been interrupted by Applejack and Rainbow Dash's fighting, she would be impressing Hammerchain. Spirited is not quite how I would describe myself this morning, if I may say so, she added. Half dead is what I say so, Hammerchain remarked. What's the matter? Did you spend the entire night drinking like that rainbow-maned friend of yours? Certainly not, Rarity answered. I knew I had work in the morning, and... Wait, how did you know about Rainbow Dash? Passed by Stormbrews on my way home yesterday. Rainbow Dash, hm? She was the loudest pony in the bar room. Haven't seen that sort of bragging since Overcast. Hammerchain paused, as if considering what he just said. When he continued, his expression had darkened. Tell your friend to be cautious. Flight Dreadwing doesn't take too kindly to a Pegasus who can't back her talk up. Hammerchain's remark surprised Rarity so much that she stopped hammering on the glowing piece of metal on the anvil. Don't let that piece grow cold, Rarity, Hammerchain warned her. Oh, sorry, Rarity replied as she composed herself. She focused on her work. The steady exertion along Hammerchain's comments snapped her out of her torpor. She looked at Hammerchain out of the corner of her eye as she continued. Do you know a lot about Flight Dreadwing? Spike asked. Been working with them even before Tailwind took the captaincy, Hammerchain replied. A lot of our bolts go to Flight Dreadwing, and most of their officers are wearing my work. What did you mean by what you said earlier? Rarity asked. Is Rainbow Dash in trouble? Hammerchain stroked his beard with one hoof. Depends on how seriously the rest of her flight is taking her. How good a flyer is she? Rarity fell into deep thought as she continued to work. Before she could say anything, however, it was Spike who answered the question. She's the best flyer in all of Equestria, he said with enthusiasm. He paused when he noticed Rarity's disapproving frown. Well, best in the heartland, anyway, he amended. Sounds bad, Hammerchain said. She'd better impress, then. Otherwise, it's overcast all over again. Might I know who this overcast is? And what happened to him or her? Rarity asked. Hammerchain looked genuinely surprised as he looked at Rarity. You don't know? He asked. I thought that you'd be familiar with the story, since you're with Vanguard Clash and Scarlet Rabbit. Rarity shook her head. If it's going to be a concern for Rainbow Dash, I'd like to hear about it, she said. Me too. Spike added. He had been content with just leaning half asleep against a crate of metal ingots until Hammerchain's ominous warning. He had seen both Applejack's and Rainbow Dash's faces after their fight last night, and concern for his friends wiped away any trace of sleep. Hammerchain hesitated. Perhaps he had presumed too much by mentioning Overcast. He considered not saying anything out of respect for whatever reason Vanguard Clash hadn't said anything, but it may befall their friend as well. He believed that they should know. Overcast used to be a flight Dreadwing flyer several years back. He joined up about the same time as Scarlet Rabbit. He was a pretty fast colt, and he knew it. Talked up a storm whenever his flight gathered together, and he did prove it by beating most of his flight mates in races. Hammerchain gestured for Rarity to stop hammering, and then inspected the blade. After eyeing it critically, he let her continue. You can't blame him entirely, he went on. Reconnaissance flights encourage this sort of behavior. Trophies, insignias, bragging sessions in barrooms. 
Overcast shot himself in the hoof, but his flight handed him the crossbow. So what happened? Spike asked. Flight Dreadwing gave Overcast a crossbow and he shot himself? He means that figuratively, Spike, Rarity chided him. She looked to Hammerchain, silently asking her teacher to continue. Right. As I was saying, Overcast had potential. He and Scarlet Rabbit were easily the best flyers in their flight at that time. Inseparable, too. Couldn't count the number of times I passed by those two over at Stormbrews. To no pony's surprise, Overcast eventually challenged Scarlet Rabbit to a race. Rarity lifted the blade she was working on and dipped it into a bucket of oil to cool. After an approving nod from Hammerchain, she went over to the grindstone to begin sharpening it. As she continued to listen, however, she already noted that there were similarities between this Overcast and Rainbow Dash. She listened intently now, knowing that whatever happens to this story might be a clue to her friend's fate in the Legion. How did the race go? she asked. I wasn't there when they went at it. Flight Dreadwing held it outside the fortress. From what I heard, it was pretty close for the first half. By the second half, Scarlet Rabbit pulled away and won by a wide margin. I guess Overcast got taken down a peg and had to learn a lesson on humility, Spike remarked. When Hammerchain didn't respond, Rarity looked worriedly at him. That's not what happened, is it? She asked. I'm sure it was a humbling experience, Hammerchain said grimly. Official story is that Overcast was so shamed that he couldn't show his face in Fangbreaker anymore, so he asked for a transfer to the Western Barrier Land. So what really happened? Spike asked. If official meant the same as truth, Hammerchain wouldn't have used the word. There was no sending off party, or even a goodbye from Overcast. No pony even saw him after the race. The popular story was that Scarlet Rabbit was so livid over his easy win that he threatened to kill Overcast, and Flight Dreadwing, rather than lose their best flyer over murder charges, decided to transfer Overcast. But he won, Rarity protested. Why would a pony be so angry over the fact that he won? Because he wanted to lose, Hammerchain answered. I saw his face whenever he won a race with his weight still on, and whenever he was listening to Overcast. Scarlet Rabbit wanted to lose, even without his weights, and he really believed that Overcast was the one to do it. When Overcast failed, I doubt that it was a pretty sight. Spike swallowed and hesitated before asking. So... What happened to Overcast after that? From what Flight Captain Tailwind told me, he tangled with a wrath dragon down in the Western Barrier Land and burned to a crisp. Guess the transfer was a bad idea after all. Rarity was silent for a while as she continued to put a fine edge on her first blade. This was bad news indeed. She didn't know Scarlet Rabbit very well compared to Rainbow or Vanguard, but she couldn't have expected something like Hammerchain's story from a pony who was constantly laid back and smiling. She thought about talking to Rainbow Dash about it, but then remembered what had happened to Applejack last night. Now she was at a loss as to what to do. Let's see how it turned out, Hammerchain said as he went over to inspect Rarity's work. He held up the blade to his face with magic, and then eyed it carefully. Not bad for a first try. Let's continue with the hilting, and... Before Hammerchain could continue, the door to the smithy opened, revealing Flight Captain Tailwind. What a coincidence, he muttered. As Tailwind walked in, all three of them noticed the enormous crossbow strapped to her back. The weapon was about as tall as a pony when stood up, and had a metal prod, unlike Rainbow Dash's crossbow. I need your help with this, Hammerchain, she said abruptly. The stock feels a bit flimsy. That's not exactly standard issue, Flight Captain. Hammerchain remarked. Off on a hunting trip. Tailwind allowed herself a wry smile. I need it ready for tomorrow's sortie. A sortie? Hammerchain asked. What for? Is the siege breaking already? I wish, Tailwind muttered. His Highness just said that we've got the first wave of reinforcements from the southern cities approaching, and we need to give them a path to the city. I've been tasked with assassinating the Bracurus, leading the woven forces by the southern gates. That sounds like a special operations Pegasus job, Hammerchain said as he levitated the enormous weapon and inspected it. Tailwind was right. There was a crack on the stock, which meant that it had to be replaced. Luckily, the prod was still usable, as was the firing lever. How'd you end up with it? he asked. 
Who knows what's going on with special operations, Tailwind said. I do know that Scarlet's laid out in the infirmary with a bolt wound on his flank. I guess none of the other squads could spare their Pegasus for the job, or I'm the best candidate after Scarlet. I'll get on it then, Hammerchain said. Wouldn't want you to take on a Bracurus with a defective weapon. Tailwind nodded and left. Once she was gone, Hammerchain let the weapon hover in front of Rarity and Spike to see. Wow, Spike said as he approached it. That thing's huge. This is a Quarrel Mark II windless operated arbalist, Hammerchain said proudly. Glad to steer the conversation away from Overcast's fate, he pointed to the engraved symbol of a hammer with its handle wrapped in chain on the prod. One of mine at that. Its string is so tough, Spike remarked as he tugged on the bowstring. I can't even bend it. It's dragon gut, Hammerchain said. Best bowstring material in all of Equestria. Rarity put the strips of leather down and stared at Hammerchain. Did you say dragon gut? She asked. Spike's eyes widened as he backed away from Hammerchain. That's right. As in the guts of an actual dragon? Spike asked aghast. You kill dragons here too? Not here, Hammerchain said. His tone softened an apology. And only the ones we can't negotiate with. Unlike you, Spike. The lesser dragons, like greed, gluttony, and lust ones, provide this material. We have to kill them anyway when they rampage through a settlement. Might as well make use of their bodies. But I haven't seen any other dragons around, Rarity said. And the ponies here don't seem to recognize Spike. You won't find any this far north. You'll find plenty down in the western barrier land. Came from there myself. Hammerchain looked at Spike to see if the baby dragon was mollified. The dragons don't mind us killing their lesser kin. Those mindless beasts are an embarrassment to them, apparently. Seeing Spike relax a little, Hammerchain went over to Rarity. Now, let me show you how to hilt that before I work on this thing, all right? He said. Rarity nodded and pushed aside her worries for now as she watched Hammerchain. In the back of her mind, fear for her friend continued to nag at her. Forced to lie on his belly, and with his flank bound up, Scarlet Rabbit stared at the infirmary's walls as if they were cage bars. He had been brought here after apparently shooting himself in the flank. If he wasn't so embarrassed by the incident, he would have protested having to spend the night in this place. All it took was a glare from Vanguard to get him to comply. Red Brand could at least get me some brandy, Scarlet muttered. He flapped his wings impatiently. Just a while ago, he had heard from Vanguard that there was a sortie being planned for tomorrow, and that he wasn't going to participate with his injury. It was all he could do to not burst out of the infirmary and tell Commander Dreadstep that he was ready for action. When one of the medics entered, Scarlet immediately turned his attention on the pony. Hey! he called out. Tell Redbrand, uh, my flank's hurting really badly, and I need a drink. Instead of hurrying away like the last medic who entered, this one approached him slowly. As he got a better look, he recognized the long pink mane and the yellow coat. Fluttershy, he said with a grin. Am I glad to see you. Say, do you have a drink on you? The lack of an immediate response didn't bother Scarlet. He was still smiling expectantly, even when he noticed the serious expression on Fluttershy's face. She was but a foot away when he decided that she wasn't as glad as he was for this meeting, and that there was no drink coming. I want you to stop. Fluttershy said in a low voice. There was no hesitation when she spoke, no stuttering, and no backing away as well. Scarlet raised an eyebrow. Stop? he asked. Stop what? Shooting myself? I'd love to, but... His voice faltered before he could finish. Fluttershy leaned on Scarlet's bed, her face just a few inches away from his face, as she stared. What she had seen last night was too much. Applejack and Rainbow Dash had argued before. They had even fought before. That would not have been a surprise, as they were both headstrong and stubborn ponies. But what had happened last night was no simple fight between friends. It was a strain on their friendship itself. For the first time in her life, she was afraid that the damage could be permanent. Rainbow was flying off somewhere she, or any of her friends, couldn't follow. And all she knew was that Scarlet Rabbit had something to do with it. 
Scarlet froze as he stared directly into those green eyes. A chill ran up his spine. He tried to speak, but no words came out. The world seemed to blur until all he could see were those eyes. Whatever you're doing to Rainbow Dash, I want you to stop it, Fluttershy said. Her normally soft voice had steel underneath this time. A response did come from Scarlet after a moment of staring. A low chuckle escaped his lips and his hoofs dug into his bed. So focused was Fluttershy on her stare that she didn't notice those until it was too late. In a burst of speed, he lunged from his bed, knocking her to the ground and then pinning her in place with his hoofs. His lips split into a crazed grin as he took quick and heavy breaths. <laughs> Found you, he said, his voice shuddering in a mixture of terror and anticipation. He had raised a hoof for a strike when Fluttershy realized that she was in danger. Before the blow could land, something struck Scarlet first. He went flying to the right before crashing into a nearby table of medical supplies. A hoof extended to help Fluttershy up. Still surprised and more than a little shaken, she took it and looked to see who had come. It was one of the senior medics. A couple of them had arrived along with Redbrand. Redbrand had turned around after kicking Scarlet and then strode forward. He gestured for the other medics to come and help him. When Scarlet got up, he still had a crazed look on his face, and he made another lunge towards Fluttershy. The bandages on his flank seeped blood as the exertion reopened his wound. The medics caught him and put him back on his bed. Tie him down! Redbrand snarled. Use chains if you have to! He looked to Fluttershy. Let's go! He growled at her before leaving the infirmary. With one last confused and frightened look at Scarlet Rabbit's thrashing form, Fluttershy followed. What were you doing in there? Redbrand demanded as they walked out of the infirmary and into the streets. Some kind of twisted chosen magic? I was... I was trying to talk to him, Fluttershy said. She realized that she was shaking. Just as Scarlet had looked into her eyes, she had looked into his. He had recoiled when the stare suddenly came on, just as any other creature did. But instead of staying recoiled, he had snapped loose like a metal spring wound up too tightly and went berserk. Redbrand suddenly stopped and grabbed hold of Fluttershy, forcing her to look at one of his hoofs. That was when she noticed that he was trembling too. This is just from catching a glimpse of your eyes, Philly, he said. You better hope that I'm not doing any surgery today. I'm sorry. Forget apologies. Why were you trying to terrify him into talking anyway? Toraro grind me. They could use you in special operations with that stare. It'd do wonders for interrogations. Well, I didn't know it was going to happen, Fluttershy said meekly. I just wanted him to stop what he was doing to my friend. But it didn't work on him. It worked all right, Redbrand muttered as he continued walking. It just didn't have the sort of effect you're used to. What do you mean? Most ponies run when faced with a truly intimidating sight. Either that, or they try to placate whatever's scaring them, with groveling and obeying usually. Then you get reactions like scarlet rabbits. Fluttershy looked at Redbrand in confusion. What other reaction to fear was there? She just didn't understand. There's an old saying here in the burial lands, Redbrand said. In battle, you bring with you a smart pony, a brave pony, a greedy pony, and a stupid pony. The smart pony will lay out brilliant plans. The brave pony will carry them out despite the risk. The greedy pony is quick to see and seize opportunities. And the stupid pony has no problem running headlong to his death. His eyes narrowed. You see Scarlet Rabbit fight once, and you know he's a stupid pony. Fast and deadly, but stupid. Fluttershy swallowed nervously, suddenly aware of just how close she had been to getting hurt when she had thought to confront Scarlet Rabbit by herself. She was fortunate that the other medics had stepped in when they did. She was now convinced more than ever that Scarlet was bad for Rainbow Dash. I've never seen such a pony before she said. You'll get used to it, Redbrand replied. Spend a few years in medical, and you'll see how the carnage of battle damages a pony, and not just their bodies either. Could it happen to me and my friends, too? Fluttershy asked quietly. What kind of question is that? Redbrand answered gruffly. 
Your ponies, too. Those ridiculous pictures on your flanks won't protect you from this place. Isn't that why Celestia stuffed you all in the heartland? He looked around him as ponies from all divisions of the Legion moved about urgently. He had also heard of the sortie planned for tomorrow, and had spent a good portion of yesterday's meeting with logistics, making sure that his wards were fully stocked. When he looked back to Fluttershy, he found her gaze on the ground, her face marred by worry. Seeing Fluttershy downcast like that suddenly gave Redbrand an urge to put a hoof on her shoulder and try to comfort her. He shook his head and refrained from doing so. What he had just said was a reality of the burial lands, something that ponies had been dealing with even before the division. There was no use in sheltering Fluttershy from it or trying to soften its impact. If it breaks her, so be it. A moment later, he nearly cursed out loud when he found his hoof patting Fluttershy on the shoulder anyway. Fluttershy looked up at him expectantly, her gloom temporarily dispelled. Still shocked and at a loss, Redbrand cleared his throat while desperately thinking of something to say. Don't mope, he said, forcing himself to sound gruff. Not every pony ends up partly deranged. Others are strong enough to stay themselves. You and your friends might be among them. A slight smile creased Fluttershy's face as she looked up to Redbrand. He scowled and looked away in response. You have friends out in the front lines, right? He asked. Tomorrow will be a test for them. You better be ready too, Fluttershy. <laughs>